This is the table I made for my mom a few years ago. This is actually the second attempt. The first one, the glue joints failed. And with this one, I used Red Grandis. And as you can see, it's got just a little bit of a cup. And if we take the straight edge here, you'll really be able to see it. So you see that? So anyway, I think we can do a little bit better. We'll go back to the shop and take another swing. If you tuned in last week, you know how I built this tabletop. If you didn't and you want to check that video out, I'll have a link to it in the description below. Now that the top is built and I just finished cutting it to length with the circular saw, the next step is to bring it outside and I'll use a straight bit in the router to put a drip edge in the bottom of the top. You go that way. Yeah. Perfect. Right there. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. I'm using a 3 8 straight bit in the router to put a groove about an eighth of an inch deep and about a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the table. This drip edge will prevent water from rolling under the table top and onto the table apron. I just put a roundover bit in the router and while I've got the table upside down, I'll use the roundover bit to soften the bottom edge. After adding the roundover to the bottom, I'll flip the top over and add a decorative profile to the top. I didn't add this to the previous tops, but I think it's going to look nice, and I'm getting kind of bored of making the same top over and over again, so this will be a nice change up. I've got the bit in the router, and I bought this bit about 30 years ago and wasn't even sure what it was called. I put a picture of it up on Instagram, and most people think it's called a table edge profile bit, so let's just call it that. I'm going to make this profile in two passes. Here's the shallow pass. Then I'll lower the router bit a little bit more and make the second pass. And hopefully by making the profile in two passes, I'll avoid any excessive burning or chip out. I've lowered the bit and I'll make the next pass. I've sanded the top and now it's ready for finish. The finish I'm using is Total Boat Gleam Spar Varnish Gloss. With this finish, you need to use at least four to six coats of the gloss sanding in between coats with 320 sandpaper. If you want a satin finish, you still need to use the gloss first and at least four coats. By using these small scraps of plywood with inch and three quarter screws in the center, I'm able to get a coat of finish on the bottom and the top. I'm applying the finish with a mohair roller and then brushing in the direction of the grain with a foam brush. Here's a quick tip. Put the roller and brush in a plastic bag and then put them in the freezer. That will prevent the finish from drying and you'll be able to use them again for the next coat. Thank you. 
Make another one in about another eight months. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you got? Uh, we're gonna get a cover on that though soon. Okay. Well, it's been about a week since I put the new tabletop on, and it's doing pretty good. Of course, it's been covered with a tablecloth. Right now, this has six coats of a gloss finish. Ultimately, I want a satin finish, but even if you want a satin finish, you need to start off with the gloss. That's going to give you your most protection. So now I'll go ahead, sand this again with 320 sandpaper, and apply another coat, this time using the satin finish. I'll let that dry overnight, sand it again tomorrow, and apply one more final coat of the satin finish. And the nice thing about this table is it has nylon domes on the bottom of the legs so it's easily moved around on this deck i'm going to put it underneath the awning so it's not under direct sunlight and also they're calling for rain in maybe an hour or two so that'll help out do this tomorrow. Wow, that sucks. Definitely gonna have to sand it though. Oh, nothing's easy. I should never have tried to do that in the sunlight. Lesson learned. Holy shit. That's horrible. That's freaking horrible. Wow. That's bad. Well, what, I, what can you do? I'll get the, uh, my phone so I can kind of try to show you how bad it is. See those lines? Just dried way too fast. I think the wood is warm and there's just enough sun here. But that is a mess. So hopefully I can fix that. Getting a little tired of this table project. It's about six o'clock the following morning. I've already given the tabletop another good sanding. I'm happy to say that I'm having better luck with this coat of finish. Again, I applied it with the mohair roller and brushed it in the direction of the grain with the foam brush. Okay, well, let's hope that a third the third time is a charm, I guess that's the saying. Uh, but I'm hoping that this top will last, and I think it will for a few reasons. Number one, the boards are sapili and they're quarter sawn. So sapili is a denser wood than red grandis. It's also quarter sawn, so the growth rings go like this, as opposed to the red grandis where the, the growth rings go like this. And even though I staggered the boards, I still had that tremendous cup, which I think had to do with the heat, uh, the fact that it's a penetrating oil finish, and the fact that the boards were plain sawn. So I don't think I'm going to have that problem with the sapili. And actually, the first tabletop was made with sapili, and I didn't have the cupping problem. Also, the marine finish is going to help, and my mom's going to actually sew a cover with a drawstring so it doesn't blow off. And I think that will be enough to to save this tabletop. But we'll go back in a year and check it out. Um, I'm not sure if I'll make a YouTube video or just on Instagram, but we'll definitely go back and I'll keep you posted on how it's doing. I wanted to include that screw up at the end there because that's all part of woodworking. I mean, I've been doing this a long time and I've had finishes just kind of blow up in my face for whatever reason. I should have seen that coming. Uh, basically, it was maybe 85 degrees out. The surface of the wood was warm. Even though I pushed it underneath the awning, I was still getting sunlight. 
And as soon as I started to put the finish on, I knew I was in trouble. So that's just all part of woodworking. You just got to work through it, not let it get you down. The following day, I was able to sand it, and the finish is looking pretty good right now. I'd give it maybe a 7 out of 10. It's not perfect. I do plan on adding another coat probably in September. So other ways to get the varnish to really lay down, first of all, don't apply it in direct sunlight. Don't apply it when it's too warm out. You want to be in the shade. And you can also put the varnish in your refrigerator for a couple hours before you use it. And that's going to help it lay down. I've done that before with polyurethane. It does really work. And it's just some uh, tip I got from an old timer years ago. And uh, if you think about it, it just makes sense. It's going to slow down the drying time and it's going to help it smooth out. So that's probably what I, what I will do when I add one more coat of the satin sometime in uh, September or October. And I do plan on freshening up that top with uh, at least one coat a year going forward. That's it for now. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.